what has been a tumultuous week for the ANC, the governing party disbanding its military veterans association and suspended MKMBA spokesperson Carl Niehaus for bringing the party into disrepute. And then, of course, the big story of the week, former President Jacob Zuma starting that 15-month prison sentence for contempt of courts. And today, another busy day in the country's courts, its uh, suspended Secretary General Ace Mahashule will learn his fate in the High Court in Johannesburg insofar as the uh, step aside and his own suspension is concerned. To unpack all of these issues, we're joined now by social scientist and author Dr. Ibrahim Harvey. Dr. Harvey, it's great to have you uh, on the show this morning. What an incredible week politically for the ANC and for the country as well. Yes, thanks very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, it's been a, a hell of a week, you know, but I can tell you that uh, what has happened over the past week will set the tone for what's going to happen both in the ANC and the country. I think to a large extent, the existing crisis, which is unprecedented in the history of the ANC, and in fact, as a ruling party in the history of the country, mm. never have you had so many various crises converging so explosively as it is, as it is in the current uh, conjuncture. You know, um, and in fact, uh, you know, the, 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 the decision by the former President Zuma to hand himself over was a welcome relief because if you looked at the warrior in Zulu-inspired resistance, you know, in Kandla on Sunday, you know, I was deeply worried by what was going to happen, and I, I foresaw the possibility that he might not be, he might be boosted by what had happened outside his home and not uh, offer himself up and go, and, you know, as he did uh, wisely, you know, um, Wednesday night. But really, uh, the reason why I think, you know, uh, as I indicate in the Sunday Times article now on Sunday, the country really needs to rally around. You know, uh, Ramaphosa, the president of the ANC, has made many mistakes and the cabinet around handling of this pandemic has left a bitter uh, taste in the mouth of many people. But at this particular conjuncture, I really think everybody <laughs> must rally behind support the president and the, the NEC even and the cabinet absolutely wants what is called the uh, rule of law to take precedence and to follow you. Mm. I, uh, wanna, I wanna just pick up on that last point that you've made there, uh, Dr. Harvey, in terms of you know, the handling of our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, in many ways, you know, a, a, as I speak to you now, our hospitals are incredibly overwhelmed. Yeah. We are seeing record numbers in terms of new daily infections. Just over the past three days, almost 1,400 yeah, uh, new deaths in terms of COVID-19. And in, in many ways, you know, the people and their families who are bearing the brunt of COVID-19 through infections and through deaths as well will see this as a sideshow, but you're saying it's actually quite important for where our country goes from here. No, extremely important. I cannot sufficiently emphasize that. You've got to read the crisis in the ANC properly. It's pivoted now. It's not even pivoted on the broader issues of the neoliberal framework. In fact, if you want to find out why this uh, health department and is in such a crisis, the hospitals are falling apart, look at the neoliberal policy framework, the budgetary constraints, the cutbacks. In, that is where the root of the problem lies. In, but, but you have to read the politics properly. You can't get carried away with even, I'll tell you that, what the ANC has not done properly with this COVID thing. They've made many mistakes, including Ramaphosa and the, some of the key brains he got rid of, you know, uh, that was supposed to advise the government on combating COVID and a strategy for that purpose. Mm. But now is a different moment now. And if you're unable to read that, you've got problems now. We have to, we have to, in a way, forget about that for the moment. We have to throw our weight behind. And I can't see. In fact, I think Magashule is in for problems today. I think that it's going to be upheld. This set, uh, step aside rule is there. It's been endorsed by the NEC. It's going to have problems. And I don't think the Peter Marisberg court ruling this morning is going to in any way challenge and seek to contradict the ruling of the Apex court. That's why you've got a hierarchical jurisprudence in this country. You can't have legal experts have seen, you've seen this week, very slim chance of, 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 of uh, you know, this thing being upheld, the, the attempt to interdict, you know, uh, uh, his sentencing uh, yeah. in the pyramid. 
occur. The likelihood is, as the lawyers have indicated, it will be upheld, and uh, we will have to then see next week what happens with the attempt to, you know, to rescind the decision of the Constitutional Court regarding that 15-month uh, sentence. And Zuma, you know, I've spent some time with him. He's very hard-headed. He must have drawn so much inspiration, must guidedly from, from Kandla's drama on Sunday that he thought he could get away with this, that the masses will rally there and prevent the police from even coming to arrest him. But he's misread this thing seriously, and he's his own worst enemy. Let me tell you, I've said this in a couple of interviews I've had this week. That man is his own worst enemy. He flagrantly violated, I mean, he created the, the, the Zonda Zone Commission of Inquiry and yet refused to play ball with it when it was summoned to answer questions. In fact, the most courage, uh, exemplary conduct of Zuma would have, should have been towards the Zonda Commission of Inquiry, mm -hmm. you know? And he's always said throughout the years, you know, and you'll see in the um, Sunday Times article that's coming, I point out, he always said, Give me my day in court, <laughs> you know? And I think that was a facade, really, because in the final analysis, as far as I'm concerned, and my reading of Zuma is as guilty as hell, let me tell you. And he's going to probably, this is separate, the 15 months. But concerning the substantive charges of uh, allegations of fraud and corruption and racketeering, it is my belief that Zuma is as guilty as hell. It will be proven later on, you know, if I'm wrong. But... For the moment, the biggest thing in this country is, is wholehearted support for the NEC of the ANC and the cabinet who want the rule of law to take its course. And we have to read that juncture properly. You know, this politics is very complex. And that is my analysis of this. As much as I'm a, the biggest critic probably in the country of the ANC and its neoliberal policies and Zuma's uh, 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 Ramaphosa's presidency, you know, I know him from 1982 when Numa's formed. Right now, uh, really, you know, Nkandla was a very serious moment on Sunday. Let's, let's, let's hone in on what's happening in the courts this morning. Uh, two big issues, yes. as you've just pointed out. Esma Khashule uh, is in the High Court in Johannesburg for his decision, the former president uh, in the Peter Maritzburg High Court at 11.30. So Ace Mahashule is, is up first. I mean, he spent quite a bit of time in addressing those cries that you've just talked about in Nkandla, uh, really antagonizing the party leadership and uh, the way it's dealt with his suspension and the step aside resolution. The decision regarding the former president, is it the beginning of the end of a particular segment of, uh, of the ANC? I, in effect, does it mean that the ANC is now really gearing up to deal more decisively with people like Ace Mahashule, particularly if the court decision today doesn't go in his favor. Absolutely. And that's precisely why the view I provided you with. You see, this is it. This is why this is a very critical moment in the ANC, because we've seen the clash, a factionalist clash, you know, which, however, I don't believe is, is very different at the policy level, despite the radical, the rhetoric of a radical economic transformation of which Zuma is supposed to be the leader and originator. It's a lot of nonsense, let me tell you. They want access to greater resources. Of the, 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 at the heart of the battle in the ANC, really, is, is the question of access to resources. And, you know, the irony of it all is that the RET faction led by uh, uh, Zuma has never been sincerely and serious about economic policy, you know, at all. So this radicalism that they project is nothing, non is, it's nonsense. But to answer your question, that is the reason why it's because you've got a big fight now. And I can tell you now from my understanding of Cyril, who's himself a lawyer and a constitutionalist, he played a big part. Everything is being thrown into this by him from the top, although I expected he would act sooner than he did and make the statement after the fiasco in, in KZ. And I thought even Sunday night, Monday, he should have addressed the nation because it was unbelievable what was allowed, you know. Uh, okay, well, the police tried to indicate why they didn't intervene, you know. But um, I think he's stamped his authority now. He does it in his own way, you know, behind the scenes and long-term uh, view and stuff like that. But right now, I think the NEC... Uh, the the uh, Mabashula thing is that he's better with the ANC. Because the ANC took a decision to suspend him. He never expected it, uh, you know, etc. So right now, and you'll see, he's all over with Zuma, okay? So Mabashule, Zuma, and many others 
Tony Ngeni included and many others who are still in government, let me tell you something, uh, uh, is the one side of this uh, factionless war. Yeah, and yeah. when the other is led by Cyril, the constitutionalist, the guy of the rule of law, but so rampant has corruption been in this country that I tell you, I mean, you know, we are, the, the corruption can kill a country. Forget about uh, policies, etc. I mean, how much money these people have stole from the fiscus that have should gone to the, to the black people. You look at the townships falling apart. What a big dent in poverty alleviation, raising our living standards would have occurred if that money wasn't stolen from the fiscus by bloody so-called ANC cadres. So, so this thing, there's a lot of implications that uh, uh, flow out of the factionalist warfare at the moment. Mm, Lots. Yeah, Dr. Ibrahim Harvey, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for uh, this discussion this morning, but certainly a point well made there, far-reaching implications for what we're seeing unfolding politically this week, not only for the ANC, but for the country as well. Dr. Ibrahim Harvey is a social scientist and an author joining us there to unpack all of these latest